So we're going to start with his left front foot. And the first step is exfoliate the foot. And the reason we do that is so we can see our landmarks clearly. Um, on this foot, um, I'm going to trim the bars, really any foot actually. Trim my bars, make sure my frog is fairly centered, and I can see the back of my collateral glues clearly. On this foot, that's fairly easy. And on a barefoot horse especially, I'm only going to exfoliate from about the center of his foot back. I'm gonna leave all the protection in the front of his foot. But I need to be able to see where the end of the bar truly lies because one of the most reliable landmarks is the bar swell, which is where the termination of the bar is. His frog though looks pretty tidy. There's just a couple little flaps here that will clean up. But other than that, I think I can see the back of that frog pretty clearly where it ends at the bottom of the collateral grooves. So now that we've cleaned our foot up, that's all we have to do. I'm gonna start with my three points to find the back of my foot. My V dimple is right here. That's pretty easy at the back of the central sulcus. I can find where my frog meets the back of my collateral groove here and here. And I can also see where my flat spots are on the back of my frog or where the frog sole plane turns to the heel bulbs. That's clearly right here. So that's gonna be the back of my foot right there. There's five ways to find the center. The first one we're gonna look at is the end of the white line of the bar, which my white line is right here. And we're going to say it's ending right about there. This one I can see ends about there. The bar swells are actually anatomical reference points on the coffin bone. And they actually make a little bit of a bump here. And it's a termination point where the bar terminates into the body of the coffin bone palmar processes being back here and the body of the coffin bone being up here. So this is actually on the bone and they're really easy to spot if you put your thumbs in the collateral grooves and come all the way down, you'll feel them bump out and it's right near the end of the white line of the bar. The next landmark we're gonna look at is the junction of sole to white line at the widest part of the foot here. And I'm gonna take my handy dividers right here and I'm gonna draw a center line down the foot so I can see where my symmetry is. Right here like that, that's the center of my foot. And I'm gonna go parallel to that and look at where the tangent on the arc is, where the furthest point out, that's the widest part right there. And then if we go to this side, right there. The next point I'm gonna look at is the frog boob. The frog boob is actually an anatomical landmark on Duckett's Bridge. Dr. Bowker talks about how there's a mass of frog here in the center that actually protects the navicular bone. And that's the, what we call the frog boob. And that term was coined by Dr. Judith Shoemaker. And it helps me remember that it's like a round center here in the middle. And then the last part we're gonna look at, which is a little bit tricky and one of the least important landmarks I look at if I feel like a lot of these other landmarks aren't working, I would look at one inch back for my true frog apex, but I'm not sure if that's my true frog apex right now because it seems like it could be stretched forward a little bit. So I would actually measure, this is a good trick, on the outside, the lateral side of my foot from the bar swell to where the junction of sole to white line is, that is the length of my true central sulcus. And I'm going to put that on my dimple and bring that forward. So that's where my true central sulcus lies, is right here. That's my central sulcus. And then I'm gonna take my dividers and I'm actually gonna take that distance and double it forward. And see, that's showing me that my true frog, um, that's pretty reliable because it's a ratio and feet are built on ratios. So here, if I now measure one inch back, from that true frog apex, that's gonna put me right about here. So if I look at where all those spots are, this one, this one, this one, this one, junction of sole white line, bar swells, end of white line of my bar, my frog boob, that's telling me that this foot, the center, if I average those marks, the center of this foot is gonna be right about here, right there. And then if I take that length, here and I double it forward to here. 
And you want to do that very precisely here to here, here to here. This is where my breakover would lie. This is my 50-50. And on this foot, that's probably going to be achievable because it's not a very distorted foot. So this is my toe callus right here. This nice kind of curved, domed part of the sole. And then my toe pillars are between my true frog apex and my breakover line on the corner line. So that goes here, and then here to here, and over here. And that might be a little hard to see. But these foot feet are pretty wet at the moment here in Pennsylvania. So let's see if a different color marker will show that toe pillar a little better. Right there and right there. And that's it. That's your basic hoof map. And, you know, again, this doesn't tell us where we need to trim to. It's just telling us that this is the center. And we want to ideally have 50-50 toe support to heel support to be balanced around the center of rotation of this hoof capsule. So I hope this is helpful. We'll be doing more hoof mapping in the future. And, uh, you know, happy mapping. Thanks.